Is Europe able to defend itself in case of war? This is a question that we don't ask ourselves very often and maybe we shrug it off from the comfort of our homes as an unlikely scenario. In this video, I will try to give you an answer hoping that Europeans will be more responsible and not take their own security and freedom for granted. The first and most probable scenario is the invasion and occupation of a European country or part of it. Nowadays, wars are fought with hybrid warfare, which means that a traditional military attack is just a part of a wider offensive plan for expansion. The principle behind this is that a disunited and unstable nation is an easy prey for a stronger one. Several disturbances, a disinformation campaign, cyber attacks and even terrorism can be used for this purpose. Today some of the most vulnerable regions of Europe are Greece and Cyprus. It's no secret that Turkey continues violating their air and sea space and some recent and rather provocative events only highlight the highly unstable situation in the area. A direct attack to Greece is unlikely due to the fact that the country is a NATO and EU member state. However, Turkey could try to take advantage of the current economical and political instability of Greece, if not worsen it, in order to make an occupation of the eastern regions of Greece more acceptable for the international community. This would be similar to what happened in Crimea in Ukraine. It's also worth mentioning that the European Union is giving billions of euros to Turkey to hold the migrants in the east, basically financing one of the most serious threats to Europe's safety and unity. Summarizing, if a foreign power was to occupy a specific region of Europe, it would have to destabilize it first and isolate it from its international alliances. The second and most dramatic case is the one of a direct attack from a foreign power that aims at the subjugation of the whole continent or large parts of it. Who would be involved in such a large-scale conflict, though? There are two important treaties that could determine this. The first one is the Treaty of Lisbon, which states that if a member of the EU is attacked, then all the other EU members are compelled to assist. But such help is very ambiguous since it does not necessarily involve the army. In any case, there is currently no such thing as a European United Army which would cause a coordinated response to an attack to be almost impossible. Just look at what happened in Libya. The attack was not coordinated at all, despite having plenty of time to plan it. The second one is the NATO. According to the Article 5 of the North Atlantic Treaty, member states consider an attack against one of them to be an attack against them all. The most important member of the NATO is the USA, considering its unquestionable military supremacy. To give you an idea, the European European countries combined invest roughly $210 billion on military expenditure. That's one third of what the US spends on its army that accounts for 36% of the entire world's military expenditure. The harsh truth is that the USA is fundamental for the safety of Europe because without it, the continent would be much more vulnerable to foreign attacks. In other words, if the USA decided to attack Europe or not defend it in case of foreign attacks, Europe would be defenseless, particularly against nuclear weapons. That's where Europe's weakness becomes gargantuan. Europe's defensive system in this case is non-existent, since the nuclear shield that defends the entire continent actually belongs to the USA. The USA also has many bases and 150 nuclear weapons deployed across the continent, while Europe has none in the US. The only European countries that possess nuclear weapons are France and the UK, with less than 500 in total, a number dwarfed by the 7,000 of the USA and Russia. In a few words, in case of nuclear war, the safety of Europe depends on the USA. It is unrealistic to think that Europe is immune to war. The situation could rapidly change and it's naive to expect the USA to take care of our safety. Instead of waiting until it's too late, European countries have to take responsibility for their future and not hesitate to take action when needed given Europe a leading role in world politics.